Hello, good morning, dear students. Welcome to Interactive Virtual Class Nagaland once again. So, students, we have been discussing about carbon and its compound. Yes, students, we have discussed in our yesterday's class that if a compound contains just carbon and hydrogen, they are known as hydrocarbon. We have also discussed about different functional groups. Yes, students, so let us look at this group of carbon compounds. We have CH4, C2H6, C3H8, C4H10, C5H12, and go, it goes on. Yes, students, so let us see. So, can any relation be drawn from this formula? Okay, can any relation be drawn from this formula? We have different, we have a set of compound here. Yes, students, containing only carbon and hydrogen atoms. So, can any relation be drawn from this series? Let us see, okay. So, let us see if we subtract, okay, ethane with methane. So, the difference between these two, okay. Let us see. We will get CH2, okay. They have, in ethane, we have two carbon. In methane, we have only one carbon. So, the remaining balance is one carbon atom. In ethane, we have six hydrogen atom. In methane, we have four hydrogen atom. If we subtract this, then we get two hydrogen atoms. So, the difference between these two is CH2. Now, let us see for these two again. Okay. So, propane, if we subtract with ethane, again, we will get CH2. Yes, students. So, the difference between these two, okay, is... CH2, between these two is CH2, between these two is CH2 and it goes on. Okay, so these are known as homologous series. So what is homologous series? A homologous series is a family of organic compounds with the same general formula, similar chemical properties and successive members differ by CH2 group. Okay, so we have seen that in a Previous slides, the given set of compound, organic compounds, differ by CH2 group. So, they are called as homologous series. So, here we have CH4, CH2, C CH4, C2H6, C3H8. Now, when we look at this compound, can you identify what type of compound is this? So, these are alkanes. Yes, students, these are alkanes, example of alkanes. So, alkanes are homologous series. So, representation of alkanes. How do we represent alkanes? Because it is a homologous series, so we can represent it by general formula. So, how do we represent alkanes? So, the alkanes are represented by the general formula Cn H2n plus 2, where n represents number of carbon atoms so remember this okay the general formula of alkane is cn h2n plus 2 okay so we have this general formula for alkane let us see if n is equal to 1 let us cal bring out the formula of alkane if n is equal to 1 so if n is equal to 1 c will be equal to 1 H will be equal to 2 into 1 plus 2 because 2N plus 2. So, we have number of hydrogen atom is 4. So, if N is equal to 1, the alkane formula will be CH4. Okay, the alkane formula will be CH4. So, we get methane. If N is equal to 2, C will be equal to 2. H will be equal to 2 into 2 plus 2, so we get 6. So, the formula of alkane, if N is equal to 2, will be C2H6. So, we get ethane. If N is equal to 4, then C will be equal to 4. H will be equal to 2 into 4 plus 2, so we get 10. So, the formula of alkane, if N is equal to 4, will be C4H10. So, similarly, you can calculate for different values of N. It may be 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
you can calculate or you can bring out the formula of the alkane for different values of N. So here we have butane. Okay, this is the butane. So we have C2H4 here. We have C3H6. C4H8. So alkenes are homologous series. Okay, alkenes are homologous series. The difference between these two is again CH2. The difference between these is also CH2. So it is a homologous series. So representation of alkenes. The alkenes are represented by the general formula CnH2n. Okay, CnH2n, where n represents number of carbon atoms. The general formula for alkene alkenes will be different. Okay, so for alkenes it is CnH2n. So let us see. If n is equal to two, we have C will be equal to two. Then H will be equal to 2, 2N. So 2 into 2. So we get 4. Then we have the formula of this alkene. If N is equal to 2 is C2H4. So the structure will be like this. Okay. Ethene. Now we have another series here. We have C2H2. C3H4, C4H6. So these are alkynes. Okay, these are alkynes. Again, you see that they are they differ by CH2. So alkynes are also homologous series. Representation of alkynes. How do we represent alkynes? Alkynes are represented by the general formula CnH2n minus 2. CnH2n minus 2, where n represents number of carbon atoms. Okay, so let us see. If n is equal to 2, C will be equal to 2, H will be equal to 2 into 2 minus 2 because 2n minus 2, then we get 2. So the formula, alkynes formula, if n is equal to 2 will be C2H2. Okay, so we get this structure. This structure is known by the name ethyne. Okay. So we have here name of the series alkanes, alkanes, and alkynes. The general formula of alkanes is given by CnH2n plus 2. The general formula of alkene is given by CnH2n. And general formula of alkynes is given by CnH2n minus 2. So if you know the number of carbon atoms or if you know the value of N, you can bring out the general formula. You can write the chemical formula or the molecular formula for different compounds, okay? Different alkenes, alkenes or alkynes. Some of the examples of alkenes are given as C2H6, C3H8. C4H10. Examples of alkenes C2H4, C3H6, C4H8. And examples of alkynes C2H2, C3H4, and C4H6. So we have here alkenes. We have alkenes. And we have alkynes. Okay, now we have discussed about functional group yesterday. So if this set of compound is, okay, replaced by same functional group, then this will also form homologous series. Okay, so these are alcohols. So alkenes and alkenes, alkenes, alkenes and alkynes along with same functional group are also homologous series. So if this set Okay, if one of the hydrogen in each of these components is replaced by same functional group, then it will also be homologous series, similarly for alkenes and alkynes. Alright, students, we have the first question for today. Please get your rough devices ready. The question is, the general formula for alkenes 
is okay. I'm giving you 15 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. The general formula for alkenes is option A CnH2n plus 2, option B CnH2n minus 2, option C CnH2n and D none of this. All right, students, your time is up. And yes, very good. The correct answer is option B, that is CnH2n minus 2. This general formula is for alkanes. This is for alkynes and this is for alkenes. So the correct answer for this question is option B. Methane. Okay, let us see. So methane formula is given as CH4. Now, if we calculate its molecular mass, we get 16. Yes, 16. If we calculate for ethane, let us see. The molecular mass of ethane is 30. And for propane, the molecular mass is 44. So, in our previous slides, we have seen that this methane, ethane, and propane, they form homologous series. The homologous series differ, okay, differ by CH2 group. Yes, students, differs by CH2 group. So here, as we add CH2, the molecular mass is increasing. So as we add CH2 to the compound in homologous series, the molecular mass of the compound also increases. Characteristics of homologous series. Let us see. So we have here homologous series. We have seen that it differs by CH2 group. Yes, students. So adjacent, adjacent members in a group, in a homologous series, okay, in a group differ by CH2 group. The members of the series have general molecular formula. We have seen for alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes. They have gradually varying physical properties. This is because the melting and boiling points increase with increasing molecular mass. Other physical properties such as solubility in a particular solvent also show a similar gradation. And they have similar chemical properties. So these are the characteristics of homologous series. All right, students, we have another question. Please get your rough devices ready. The question is, an alkene with six carbon atom will have how many hydrogen? Okay, I'm giving you... 15 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. Yes, students. An alkane with six carbon atoms will have how many hydrogen atoms? All right, students. Your time is up. So let us see. Let us see. The general formula for alkane is given as CN. H2N plus 2. N is the number of carbon atom. So N is equal to 6. So H will be equal to okay, CN H2N plus 2. N is equal to 6. So H will be equal to 2 into 6 plus 2. So we have 6 2 is 12 plus 2 we will get 14. Okay, we will get 14. So the correct answer for this question is option D, that is 14. Okay. Very good, students. Now, students, let us see some examples of nomenclature. Okay, some examples of nomenclature. Nomenclature is naming of the organic compounds. Okay. So let us see here. We have one carbon compounds here. How many carbon do we have? Let us see. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six carbon compound. We have six carbon atoms in this compound. Yes, students. So if the number of carbon atom is six, what is the prefix that we use? The prefix we use is hex, H-E-X, correct? H-E-X. Now, when we look at this structure, we see that all the bonds between the carbon-carbon atom are single bond. So, it is an alkene. So, the suffix that we will use here will be A-N-E. Yes, students. So, the name of this compound is 
hexane. Prefix will be hex because there is six carbon. We see that there is only single bond, so it is saturated alkene. So this suffix will be ane. When we add the prefix and suffix, we will get hexane. So the name of this carbon compound is hexane. We have another compound here. Let us see how many carbon atoms do we have. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five carbon atoms. So what will be the prefix? The prefix will be pent. Yes, five carbon atoms. So the prefix will be pent. P E N T. Now let us look at the number of bonds. Okay, the nature of bonds between two carbon atoms. We see that all the bonds are single bond. So it is a saturated compound alkene. So the suffix will be A N E. Yes, students, the suffix will be A N E. Now we see that there is an extra group present here. Yes, students, chlorine atom. So how will we name it? Now we have discussed in our previous class that if the fun functional groups, okay, if the halogens are present, okay, like chlorine, bromine, then the, there will be prefix by the name chloro for chlorine, bromo for bromine. So this has five carbon atoms. So pen, it's an alkene, so A N E. So we have pentane. Again, we have chlorine, so the prefix will be chloro. So the name of this compound will be chloro plus pen plus N. So we get chloropentane. Okay, so this is the name of the given carbon compounds here. We have another one here. Yes, students. We have another compound here. So we have here three carbon atoms. Sorry, we have four carbon atoms here. So the prefix will be but, B-U-T. We see that all the bonds in this compound are single bond between the carbon atoms. So it is saturated, so suffix will be A-N-E. We have one ex extra group present here, C-O-O-H. So C-O-O-H, what is the name of this functional group? Yes, students. So we have functional group carboxylic acid is given by the formula COOH. So if carboxylic acid group is present, the sub, there will be suffix by this OIC acid. So we have four carbon atoms. It is an alkene, so we have butane. But again, we have carboxylic acid. So the name of this compound will be butane plus okay, OIC acid. So we will get butanoic acid. So the name of this compound is butanoic acid. We have another compound here. We have three carbons. So the prefix will be prop. Okay. There is sing only single bond between the carbon atoms. So it is a saturated and it is an alkene. So the suffix will be A and E. Now we have another functional group present. Yes, we have another functional group present that is C double bond O. So what is the name of this functional group? Yes, we have C double bond O H. So the name of this functional group is aldehyde, by the, known by the formula CHO. So the suffix, when aldehyde functional group is present, suffix AL is used. We have three carbon atoms. It is an alkene, so we have the name propane. But again, it contains aldehyde. If aldehyde is present, the suffix AL is used. So the name of this compound will be propanol. Okay, propanol. The name of this compound will be propanol. All right, students. So we have seen some examples. So we have an activity. Please note this down and try this at home. This will be your homework. Name the following compounds. So we have this first compound. Please note it down. And we have the second compound. So this will be your homework. Okay, naming of the following compounds will be your homework. All right, students, let us proceed. We have one question, another question. Please get your rough devices ready. The question is, 
okay c5 h12 is called as which of the following i'm giving you 15 seconds for this question your time starts now c5 h12 is called as dash butane pentane hexane hexane yes students all right students now when we look at this formula how many carbon atoms does it have it has five carbon atoms if five carbon atoms is present in a carbon compound then it is known by the prefix pent yes so in this four option we see that option b has the prefix pen okay now if you calculate the number of hydrogen atom using the general formula of alkene you will get 12 so this is a five carbon atom so prefix pen will be used and it is an alkene so suffix a and e will be used so here the correct answer is option b pentane we have another question please get your rough devices ready students the question is the name of the compound ch3 ch2 cho is which of the following i'm giving you 15 seconds for this question your time starts now the name of the compound ch3 ch2 cho is which of the following all right students your time is up so let us analyze this formula how many carbons do we have we have one two three so the suffix use will be prop yes students now we see only single bond so it the suffix use will be a n e but we have another functional group c h o c h o is an aldehyde group now when aldehyde group is present then the suffix al is used so we will replace e by al so the name of this compound is propanol so which option is propanol so option a propanol is the correct answer okay very good students now students so far we have discussed about the different carbon compounds we have al we have discussed about alkanes we have discussed about alkenes alkynes different functional groups we have also discussed about the naming of these different carbon compounds now we will discuss about the chemical properties of these carbon compounds in today's class okay so let us see here here we see a girl lighting a stove and it starts to burn here we see a candle burning here we see firewood burning Then here we see some boys playing with firecrackers and it is burning. Yes, yeah, students. The next example we have here is methane gas. Okay, methane gas it's burning and we have the incense burning. So in all of these case, okay, in of all of these case we see that something or the other is burning yes you have already learned about combustion in your lower classes right so burning combustion in simple terms it is burning okay so in all of this case combustion is taking place now when we look at this different substance are burning and this burning of different substance is known as combustion so combustion is the first chemical properties of carbon compounds that we will discuss okay so let us see carbon compounds are used as fuel in different cases here we have firewood we see that firewood are being cut down to use as fuel especially in villages and here we have petrol and diesel which is used as fuel in vehicle we have isopropyl alcohol we have methane gas we have liquefied petroleum gas lpg which we use at home for cooking so these are the different 
substance which are based on carbon. So, these are carbon compounds. Okay. The wood, it, also is, it is also based on carbon. So, it is also a carbon compound. Petrol, diesel, alcohol, methane gas, liquefied petroleum gas, all these are compound, carbon compounds and they are used as fuel for different purposes. So, let us see. Carbon, when it reacts with oxygen, okay, when it reacts with oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide plus heat and light. So, carbon, when it reacts with oxygen, it undergoes combustion. It produces carbon dioxide and heat and light, along with heat and light. Methane gas, okay, when it reacts with oxygen, it Produce carbon dioxide, water, along with heat and light. Then we have another example. Ethanol. When it reacts with oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide, water, along with heat and light. Okay. So all these are examples of combustion. What is combustion? Combustion is a process in which a substance reacts with oxygen, okay, reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide along with heat and light. So, we have this example. These are some of the examples of combustion. So, we see that carbon in all its allotropic forms burns in oxygen to give carbon dioxide along with release of heat and light. So, these are some of the examples of combustion. So, know that carbon compounds they undergo combustion okay Car carbon we have carbon we have methane all these are form of carbon compounds yes students so carbon in all its allotropic forms burns in oxygen to give carbon dioxide along with release of heat and light now students let us see we have here gas burning we have candle burning we have methane lpg burning lpg gas then we have the ethanol burning in spirit lamp then we have the naphthalene balls we have camphor so all these are also different forms of carbon okay different carbon compounds so we see that all of these are burning but when we observe carefully we see that the color of the flames is different so here we have gas burning we have camphor burning we have spirit lamp we have naphthalene balls so here lpg methane gas and alcohol when they burn they will produce clean flame okay they will produce clean flame on the other hand naphthalene balls camphor and candle wax when they burn they will produce yellow flame with soot and residue okay so why is this so why do some carbon compounds produce clean flame during burning while some carbon compounds produce yellow flame with soot and residue why so why is this so let us see okay so we have lpg gas then we have methane gas we have alcohol yes students we have LPG, we have ethanol and we have methane gas. So, this LPG, ethanol and methane gas, when they burn, they produce clean flame. On the other side, we have the camphor, we have candle wax and we have naphthalene. So, when this camphor, candle wax and naphthalene, they burn, they produce yellow flame with soot and residue. It is because this LPG, methane gas, ethanol are saturated hydrocarbons. Saturated hydrocarbons, they undergo complete combustion. Okay, so they produce only clean flame. On the other hand, naphthalene, camphor, wax are unsaturated hydrocarbons. And hi unsaturated hydrocarbons, they undergo incomplete combustion, so they will produce sooty flame. In this case, saturated carbons, they produce clean flame unsaturated hydrocarbons they produce sooty flame or flame with soot and residue so remember this difference saturated carbons they will burn with clean flame 
unsaturated hydrocarbon they will burn with sooty flame that is it will have yellow flame with soot and residue so here we have two cases M mother is cooking in the kitchen one is with blue flame the other is with yellow flame so when the flame is blue in color there is supply the supply of oxygen is rich and when the flame is yellow the supply of oxygen is insufficient now we have seen that in combustion the substance reacts with oxygen yes so if the supply of oxygen is rich then it will undergo complete combustion hence it will result in blue color flame but if the supply of oxygen is insufficient then there will be incomplete combustion and it will result in yellow color flame so if the supply of oxygen is rich we will get blue flame if the supply of oxygen is insufficient we will get yellow flame because in this case there is complete combustion and in the second case there is incomplete combustion know this methane it reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water okay in complete combustion the carbon compounds will react with oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water in incomplete combustion methane will react with oxygen to give carbon monoxide and water the difference okay in complete combustion the carbon compounds will react with oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water in incomplete combustion methane will react with oxygen to give carbon monoxide and water all right students we have another question please get your rough devices ready the question is carbon and its compound burn in oxygen to give dash along with the release of heat and light so i'm giving you 15 seconds for this question your time starts now carbon and its compound burn in oxygen to give dash along with release of heat and light Okay, consider this as complete combustion, incomplete combustion. All right, students, your time is up. And yes, very good. The correct answer is option A, that is carbon dioxide. Carbon and its compound burn in oxygen to give carbon dioxide along with the release of heat and light. We have another question, students. Please get your rough devices ready. The question is which of the following carbon compound will give sooty flame? Okay, I'm giving you 15 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. Which of the following carbon compounds will give sooty flame? All right, students, your time is up. So let us see. Methane is a saturated carbon compound, saturated compound. Ethanol is also saturated compound. And LPG is also saturated compound. Saturated carbon compound gives clean flame. Yes, so this three will not be the option. Here, chem4 is an unsaturated carbon compound, so it will give sooty flame. So the correct answer is option C, that is chem4. Now let us see some ill effects of incomplete combustion. Okay. So here we have industries. The fuels used in industries, okay, in factories and at home, the fuel that we use at home for various purposes like for cooking, for boiling water, and the fuels used by vehicles to run. And here we see forest on fire. Okay, so in all these cases, there is incomplete combustion. So carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and deadly gas which is produced by incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons. So when there is incomplete combustion, carbon monoxide is released into the air, okay, instead of carbon dioxide. So carbo carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and deadly gas which is produced by incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons and this carbon monoxide is dangerous to us so let us see this is our human body 
Okay, let us see how this carbon monoxide affect our health. So when we inhale, okay, when we inhale the air, we breathe in and breathe out. Yes, yeah, students. So when we inhale carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is known by the formula CO. Carbon monoxide and hemoglobin forms a stable compound called carboxy hemoglobin. Okay, so carbon monoxide hinders the ability of hemoglobin to transport oxygen. The oxygen in our body is transported to different parts of our body by the hemoglobin which is present in our blood. But if this carbon monoxide form this compound carboxy hemoglobin, then it will hinder the ability of hemoglobin to transport oxygen. Low concentration of carbon monoxide causes headache, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, fatigue and weakness in human and higher concentration of carbon monoxide in our blood causes blood poisoning leading to coma and death. So these are the ill effects of carbon monoxide to our health. Now more to know, it does not only affect human health but it also affect the human, it also affect the environment, it leads to climate change. Different oxides of nitrogen and sulfur dissolve in the rain and give rise to acid rain. Now when this acid rain falls on earth, it will have okay, adverse impact or adverse effect on the marine life. The plants and animals living in water bodies, it also destroys vegetation and the buildings and monuments. And this also effects of other gas release. During incomplete combustion, effects of release of other gases will also lead to global warming. So these are some of the effects of ill effects of incomplete combustion. Formation of coal. So let us see. We know that coal and petroleum, they are carbon form of carbon compounds. So how were this coal and petroleum formed? So let us see. Million of years ago, Okay, when the plants and trees, they got buried under the soil due to natural disaster like earthquake and vulcan volcanic eruptions, they were buried under the soil. As more and more soil, okay, covers them, they were pressed harder and harder. Okay, so we, first peat was formed, then lignite was formed. And this lignite under high pressure and temperature, okay, under high pressure and temperature, it decomposes or it decays to coal. And that is how we have coal now. First 3,000 to 4,000 million years, we have, years ago, we have peat. The peat is then again changed to lignite, then lignite is changed to coal. So this is how coal is formed. Coal is formed from trees, okay, plants that got buried under the soil million of years ago. And for petroleum, okay, 3,000 to 400 million years ago, the plants and animals that live in the sea, they got buried under sand and silt, okay. So plants and animals remains in the sea or ocean, they were covered with salt, sand and silt million of years ago. Under high pressure and temperature, these plants and animals remain, they form oil and gas deposit or the petroleum. And this sand and silt, they change to rock of under high temperature and pressure. So this is how coal and petroleum were formed, were formed, all right. Now we have here firewood, we have coal. So initially the volatile substance present vaporizes and burn with flame. Now our question here is, why do some substance burn with flame and sub some, some substance burn without flame? Taking the example, if we burn firewood, it burns with flame. But if we burn charcoal, it does not burn with flame, although it produces heat. Yes, students. So why is it so? Okay, it is because the substance which are volatile, okay, the substance which are volatile, they will vaporize, okay, they will vaporize and they will produce flame. But if the substance does not vaporize during burning, then it will not.
produce flame. So remember this difference. Substances which vaporizes during burning will produce flame, whereas substances which does not vaporize during burning will not produce flame. Alright students, so in today's class, we have discussed about homologous series. We have discussed the general formula of alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. We have also discussed briefly about nomenclature, how to name different carbon compounds. I have also given you homework. I hope that you will try to name those given compounds at home. Okay, then we have discussed about the chemical properties of carbon compound. In today's class, we have discussed about combustion. We will discuss more about chemical properties of carbon compound in our next class. Okay, so students, this leads us to the last question for today. Please get your rough devices ready and respond to this question. So how do you feel about today's class? I'm giving you 10 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. Yes, students. All right, students, your time is up. Thank you so much for your response and thank you for joining today's class. I will see you again in our next class. Till then, take care everyone and have a nice day.